Hey guys, Drutter here. It's March the 6th, and I just wanted to briefly go into a few things before I go into the title of the video. This is the silver chart, of course, the five hourly chart. Each bar is five hours, and on the right there you see we're just around the $29 mark. Not too exciting, but um, I just wanted to point out this dip here. This dip here, followed by the um, engulfing candle right next to it that actually exceeded the previous candle, was a bit of a bullish signal to me on the chart. When I've seen that before, I've often seen gains that come afterward, and I've been watching it since that time, and we have now made another couple of highs here at the $29 mark. So uh, it just looks to me like we're going to try and retest that $30 level, even though silver is really, really down in the dumps. And we can go to a longer-term chart to look at that four-year trend line. There we go, and we can add a line, of course, as we have done many times. Uh, going through all these points and as we can see here we're sitting right on that line so yeah we are still on that four plus year trend line uh, it's going to take a break down below 29 um, or 28 really and staying below there for the whole week to really break this line um, a test of 27 ish is certainly in the cards I mean what if the stock market has a crash it's up to 14,000 and something now record levels every day being broken in the Dow but, um, you know, when that cracks and falls, there could be a drop in the silver market as well along the same time, which to me would be a buying opportunity. Um, that would be probably to the 27 level, perhaps to the 23 level. If it gets to 23, Stella Concepts is coming back on YouTube, so that would be the plus to that for me anyway. But, uh, yeah, we're still around the $29 mark and still sitting right on that trend line. It looks like gold mining stocks are doing really, really well all of a sudden right now, up between 5 and 10% across the board, it seems. Uh, I don't know a lot about stocks or about mining stocks in particular, but this might be something that people might want to have a look at. Link is below. Bitcoin's trading at an all-time high, which is interesting to note. Uh, although, look in the comments section, even people advocating this stuff. This guy got 20 thumbs up and one down so far. And look at number five. He said it, that Bitcoin is money. Ouch, dude, no. Bitcoin is a currency. It is not a store of wealth. You <laughs> Look at the chart for Bitcoin. You think it's a store of wealth? Ouch. No, Bitcoin is not a store of wealth. It's a currency, not a money. Another comment I saw here. Here. I earned a month's wage while I was sleeping last night, and a month's wage the day before, too. I happen to think it's likely to sustain growth for a long time to come with a few blips. Um, you didn't earn a month's wage while you slept last night. You didn't. You didn't earn it. And uh, it wasn't really a month's wage that you got until you sell your bitcoins. That's the thing with an investment. Also, who do you think you got that from? Where did that value come from? Did that just get magically created? Is bitcoin creating wealth? Or are you a trader and you're trading something and your increases come from someone else's losses? that is what you need to understand you aren't creating any wealth by sitting there and sleeping and owning bitcoin so you know people need to get this into their heads bitcoin is not money and you aren't creating value just by holding bitcoins um, bitcoin is a medium of exchange and it's a, a good medium of exchange because it's not controlled centrally but bitcoin is not money and it's not a store of intrinsic value certainly an interesting chart now moving on to the actual purpose of this video, uh, a couple of days ago I did a video and this was part of it, the chart where I compared the sales of Silver Eagles against the price of each Silver Eagle and noted that um, sales follow the price. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little summary of that and then afterwards I'm going to put my updated analysis as some March numbers are coming out now. I've done some analysis here. This is... The number of Silver Eagles sold in Januarys and Februarys over the past uh, 13 years. So starting in 2000, going all the way to 2012. Does anyone recognize this chart? Yeah. This is the silver chart here. I've drawn it in here in green so it looks the same, but this is the silver chart over the same time frame. So the sales have roughly been following the price. Now, if we extrapolate this out one more year, 10.9 million. So we have had a record year 
for Januarys and Februarys so far. Um, and if you look at this, this doesn't necessarily reflect that. So we have followed the same pattern through to 2012, but the 2013 numbers are already showing that we are breaking free from the pattern of just following this um, price. So I want to make a graph that compares the price of silver to the demand for silver. And I'm going to use silver eagles as the demand side of things. I know that silver eagles don't represent the entire investor demand for silver. There's all kinds of other coins and bars to be bought out there, but it does have a pretty good cross-section of what's going on. And we have accurate, or at least I hope accurate, numbers from the mint going back. So we want to go back to 2000, and so this will be a 14-year chart, including the year 2013. And we're going to analyze the time period from January 1st to April 1st. And of course, March isn't complete yet, so we have to project what March's totals will be. And I don't know, this amount here was updated last night, the 5th of March. I would assume that would be up to and including their sales on the 5th of March. But just to be conservative, I'm going to assume, because today is the 6th, that this total actually... Uh, covers the sixth as well. That's today. I don't think it does, but let's just be conservative here. And we'll say that six thirty firsts of the month are gone. So 0.19 of the month is gone. And you take the reciprocal of that, you get 5.16 repeating. And then multiply by the figure that they give that has been sold so far this month. And you get a total of 4.5 million eagles projected to be sold in March, which yes, will be a record March, and that matches up with the record February and the record January. Then what we have to do is go back through here and go to the year 2000, look at their silver sales in January, February, and March, and add those three together, and then do that for each of the following years up to and including the year that we are currently in 2013 using the projected March total rather than this partial March total. It doesn't matter where we get the price totals for each year. I'm going to use the high of each year. So this website gives me the data um, 9.23 in 2005. That was in December. And then the following May in 2006, it was about 15 bucks, about 16 bucks in 2007. The high was 21 almost in 2008 and so on. So we'll take all that information and then bring it over onto our graph. I found this rather simplistic graphing website. I'm sure there's a lot better sites and a lot better free software I could download if I wanted to do professional graphs, but this suits my purposes for now. So what I've done is I put in the years on the left-hand side from 2000 to 2013 inclusive, and then I've put the um, sales from uh, the U.S. Mint's website here in millions, 2.7, 2.4, etc., all the way down. Uh, and the projected totals for 2013, including March's projected total. And then on the right-hand side, this is the uh, high silver price for the year, divided by four, so that it fits on the same graph. That doesn't change the data or manipulate anything in any way. That just allows the graphs to be compared on the same page. And what do we get? This is a little small, but I'll blow it up and show you. The data is telling me a couple of things here. One of them is that people who buy silver buy when the price is up. Unfortunately, I've noticed that before, um, having some experience with buying and selling myself and buying and selling to and from other people. I have noticed that people uh, get interested and stack silver more often when the price is high. I think that's kind of unfortunate, but uh, that seems to be the way it is, and I think it's like that with a lot of other things. Um, I imagine that Bitcoins, now that they have reached an all-time high, will reach a new all-time high. Perhaps so will the Dow as the uh, mainstream media is pumping it into the news that the Dow is um, making new records and I think that will bring people in, unfortunately, rather than signaling to people, hey, it might be overpriced right now. But uh, that's just how it goes. And uh, the other thing this tells me is that we've had a uh, divergence in the graph. See, it looks like the silver price and demand for silver follows very, very, very closely, including to that peak in 2011 at $50, and the pullback last year. We've had a further pullback this year. The highest price we had so far is about 32 bucks. 
So it's registering right here at the 8 mark because I divided everything by 4. But the demand is nowhere near that. In fact, the demand is significantly higher than the demand even in 2011, which was a previous record. So it looks like we're on par for a record year. In fact, perhaps 20 or more percent higher than any year previously. So demand is a lot stronger compared to price than it ever has been in the past. Um, I will allow other people to draw their conclusions on that, but that's what the graph is telling me. And uh, I'm going to keep an eye on this in the next little while because I think this is a story. I really do. Um, I'm going to watch throughout March and I'll redo those calculations and I'll redo this graph and see if um, it continues to hold up and we'll watch throughout the year as that unfolds because we've had a record January, February and March uh, or at least so far in March um, and records are something that needs to be looked at. Why is there a record? Why is demand so high for silver bullion right now? I think it's a good thing though because when the price is down that is a good time to buy so maybe we've learned maybe this is the silver community learning probably not um, but hey you never know and with that, that's the end of my video. Hope it was useful. I'll keep track of this as we go forward. Talk to you soon.